Pyrolytical Radio Show. This is a movie review for Pyrolytical. Well, how do you even start with this movie? I don't think I've ever been less engaged in a movie than I was during this movie. I'm not sure what this movie was. Like, the format was really weird. It was part dramatization, part documentary, part, part mockumentary. It was, it was just really, and then the grand finale was like a fireworks show on the 4th of July. And, and the uh, proclamation of everybody's need to be very patriotic. Now, I, I give credit to Mr. D'Souza for going through what he went through after his last movie and then coming back for more. He had some insights that he gained from being acquainted with the criminal element. Well, let's let's set that up. So Dinesh is shown going to jail because he gave somebody too much money for a political can campaign. Right. And so and that can happen. <laughs> it, that's the setup for this movie is that Dinesh went to jail and he starts to meet people and learn how gangs work and how schemes work. And then he uses that to color the whole production with the Clintons want to steal America. So it's the biggest con That's in the world. world. And I think I think it was effective at showing that. I just feel like he was so centered on or focused on getting one side of the aisle to look like the devil. Well, that's because that's because he he believes one thing, right? Yeah, he believes that there is virtue in one party versus the other. And there is gonna, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert because we are going to talk about basically everything here. So he basically sets up the, the initial part of the movie, what happened to him. He's in jail and he's showing basically that the Democratic Party wants to steal America. It's going to lead to the Islamic Caliphate and World War. It's, the stakes are <laughs> higher than they've ever been. I can't listen to you and, and take it and like have a serious face. Just hearing you set that um, set that up. Yeah, it's well, it is world politics, so there is definitely some humor. seriousness to no, it. Humor and it's hum world a politics. lot of humor. So the next thing is just Dinesh talks about the history of the Democratic Party and I from my studies I feel like most of that was probably pretty accurate it has been a nice bait and switch the Democrats have become the party of minorities and freedom and equal protection and and history doesn't really show that from my study and I think you know there's probably some factoids that he embellished or cherry-picked or whatever but for the most part, I think I think he's right on well, that. Well, yeah, but there was some cherry picking in in the fact that okay, we're going to say everything that was awesome about my party of choice, and everything that I think was totally awful about the other party, so we can castigate one versus the other and try and paint one in a specific light versus the other. I mean, it, yeah, it's just it's just common media. Well, and he said that at the time of the Civil War, no Republican owned a slave. I, is that possible? I don't know. And then he said all the broken treaties the USA had at that time were all Democrats that had broken treaties. He just made a lot of accusations against Democrats. That basically everything they did was bad. Everything Democrats are always bad. Republicans are always good. So, so we, you, we take this opportunity to set a precedent and we're going to assume that that precedent follows through the rest of history to today. Yeah. So and that, that's how it was set up. Now. As we look at today, it's probably the same, well, regardless of the individual or individuals who are involved in well, party politics. He definitely skewered uh, Andrew Jackson, like just skewered the guy, made him look like a fiend and, and all that. And yes, I agree, there's a lot of that that's true. Andrew Jackson did kill the bank, so he, yeah, he does get a that's, pass. Yeah, that's on the that. one thing he didn't bring up is he killed the bank. So Andrew Jackson, according to the movie, reinforced racial slavery, but he undid 
uh, financial slavery through the central banking system. Right. So, so he, he's a, a weird. Pick and choose. But but there's but there's as he sets things up. Nobody goes out to mo make a movie like this, and then try and objectively show both sides. Right. Exactly. They're, they're going to pick and choose and say this is this is what was amazing about the guys I like and this is what I don't like. And well, and one thing he did promote is that Republicans were for the Fourteenth Amendment and Democrats were against it. That's one side I would say. Good job, Democrats. Fourteenth Amendment sucks. Yeah, but it, it sucks. did you like slavery? Oh, sure. Come on. That that's the other side of this. I mean, I brought this up before. You know, having run for office, that. Everything like that, you know, they say the 14th Amendment did X, and that must have been the only thing, right? When I ran for office, there were all these, these people that would send you um, questionnaires. To, you know, the NRA was a great example of that. They tried to, to say, okay, pigeonhole, you know, or if it has the Second Amendment protections in there, are you going to vote for it? And well, yeah, it well could... if it has abortion in it too, then I yeah. can't. You know, so. what, what do I do? It's but, just a game. But that's that's exactly how this was kind of crafted. Okay. Um, one was the Second Amendment and blacks. Um, apparently blacks couldn't own guns in many parts of the country. They just couldn't by law. And so um, there were big advocates that were black back in the day for the Second Amendment. And that's great because self-defense is... So Ida Wilson, the black Republican journalist, okay. scolds Woodrow Wilson. And it was awesome because Woodrow Wilson was defending segregation. She's like, oh, you think it's good for blacks? It's like, obviously it wasn't. So the story moves along that the plantations of the South were recreated in the inner cities. And that's when the immigrants and the blacks kind of flipped and started to support the Democratic Party. And handouts, and handouts, and Frederick Bastiat, housing. Yeah. When plunder becomes easier than labor, plunder will ensue. Okay. And Alveda King was in the movie saying oh. that the blacks Martin were tricked. Luther King. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, his granddaughter said the blacks were tricked by things like the Negro Project of Margaret Sanger and others, where blacks were promised to have empowerment and to get, you know, equality of stuff and of opportunity. And really, it was just a ruse to win them over because the Democrats realized the old racist way wasn't working, so they needed a new racist way. And for my study of history, that's pretty accurate. So that was good. I mean, I, I thought the history stuff was generally okay, but it led us to Saul Alinsky and to Obama. Okay, but definitely and Hillary blinder. Yeah, absolutely. With the blinders on, we'll look at the history that we want to talk about, and that's fine. That's it's his movie, so he can do that. He did show one scene though, where the prisoners with him in prison were uh, cheering that Hillary Clinton was going to be nominated right for president. president. And the thing that's interesting is those people who are great cons in the in the jail. I noticed they're teaching him how gangs work. They're completely tricked, or um, they're completely persuaded that the Democrats are the party for minorities, and that's what some of these people in jail tell him. But they can't see the big con in politics. But they can't see the one con. See, they, they, they are saying that they can basically, oh, it's the Republicans that are the bad guys, right? So they're saying, we see the one party con, we just can't see the other party con. Well, that's the funny thing. These guys who are in prison because they're con artists <laughs> and they spend their life living by cons can't see the giant political con right in front of them. So it's a, that the just shows that these- Would that be a polygon con? A polygon. That just shows how good the Clintons and the uh, progressive left are, are. So we talked about Alinsky, we talked about Hillary Clinton. She was a Goldwater girl originally, which is interesting. But she quickly transitioned into an Alinsky girl or an Alinskyite. And uh, she met him and spoke for, you know, introduced him at speeches and uh, basically adopted rules for radicals. However, she took it up a notch according to Dinesh. She was the rules for radical radicals. She didn't want to fight the power, she wanted to become the power so that within the power structure they could start to steal America. And she's the first one who ever had that idea. Apparently, yeah. Um, he went an awful lot on Hillary and Bill's relationship. Bill is a sex abuser, a rapist, and Hillary is the fixer. I'm like, wow, that's pretty, <laughs> some pretty blunt stuff, but it seems pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, oh man, there's so much dirt around those people you know where there's flies there's usually beep so uh, did you just censor yourself I that did was, that was very responsible self censored Clinton Foundation you can google this stuff Clinton Foundation is corrupt obviously they stole a lot of money 
uh, uranium to Russians, the uh, Haiti earthquake fund. I mean, they give speeches five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for twenty minutes. That's all accurate. Benghazi, just a, a short mention on Benghazi. The tough part is, is you you have Benghazi brought up because it's talking about Hillary. Yeah, but ultimately, is Benghazi the issue, or is international entanglement the issue? Well, it depends if you're in so, D'Souza's world or in reality. Right, right. So, it, so are we worried more about the fact that that Benghazi happened, or why the heck were we over there for Benghazi to happen? Well, he made the point about Benghazi. The reason that Hillary Clinton did nothing about it because she had no she way to make any money. Make money, off yeah, it. yeah. I and, thought. And, uh, that, that's an interesting cut, but ultimately, all of these little issues, you know, that, that were brought up, not all of them, okay, Bill and Hillary's personal life and their relationship, that's a whole, it's the same thing. The sex capades. But, but when you're talking about, um, you know, international politics and the mafia that exists in Washington, D.C. and how they react with it, that's not just a democratic thing. That's not at a, Democrats all. and Republicans. That's a, everybody in Washington D.C. They're all in it because it makes them money. So let's break this all down because there's one more portion of the movie that totally okay. is the fireworks. Jarring. Oh, but he says before the transition at the very end, he says. Quote, now we know the secret history of the Democratic Party and who Hillary Clinton is, end quote. It should be over, right? I mean, it's done its purpose. It showed that Hillary is the devil and Obama and all that. But then it does this thematic turn, which is a complete what I call the fireworks show. And you see bombs bursting air, flags waving, the military fighting. You see cities. You see amber waves of rain. And it's playing this patriotic song. What was it? America the Beautiful? Or? No, well, God Bless America. God Bless and America. Then, and then after that, the national anthem. And what was the purpose of that? The purpose of that is, well, like anything, right? You, you hear a message, and then he turned it right at the end, right? So now I can't vote because of his conviction. He says, I can't vote, but you can. Meaning and his then, felony. Right, because of his conviction, which I was like, his conviction? What, his beliefs? Oh, yeah, he was convicted. It was a very catchy line. It, it was it really was good. not catchy. It totally messed me up. <laughs> um, he goes in, and right after that, but you can vote, and then there is the transition. So, on the one hand, he's trying to say, okay, Democrats are, are the source of all evil, Hillary is totally evil, so now you can vote. So now that I've told you that, you have to believe that the source of all good is the Republican Party, and so all this goodness that you're seeing, all the, the flag waving and everything else, should be attributed to the goodness which is the Republican Party. You watch the credits, and at the very end, it shows him teaching a class. He's teaching English <laughs> to immigrants, yeah. and he says, how do you know when you become an American? When you join the Republican Party. Really? To me, it just put a stake in the heart of any level of objectivity, which was long gone at the beginning. But, but well, at least you you were like, okay, okay wait a second, wait you a second. showed a good history of the Democrat Party. No, 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 no. Hillary's America was your first clue that there was no way this was going to be objective. Okay. <laughs> it could have been. If, really? If they had shown her with all what, of what was the this, what was people this she does. Hillary's America. The secret history of the... Yeah, you're right. It was screwed. <laughs> There's no way. This is this is totally... We're one-sided. So, who are you talking to? You know, I doubt highly that there was more than maybe a small... Like, maybe 5% or less of non-Republicans that even went to go see this movie. So who is he talking to? He's talking to his own audience. People that are white Republicans. Tickets. Exactly. And most and of them silver haired. Okay. Because they're scared about what's happening with they're their scared of security. Terrorism and they're scared and all of that. terrorism. They're scared of Hillary. I mean, who wouldn't be? So the first time I saw this, the crowd is all sixty and up, and for two minutes to three minutes straight they clap. Okay. They were so uh, moved by this lionization of the military industrial complex, the right, the Republican Party, that they, they were crying. I mean, the whole time I'm watching it, they're crying, they're making comments, they're just 
So, and I'm like, what is the purpose of this? They're all going to vote for Trump anyway. What? But you but, just spent but millions of dollars to reinforce something that's already there. But playing off fears, right? Yeah. The whole thing is playing off fears. That that fireworks show at the end is says, okay, the Democrats are awful. You know, don't go that way. And now, let's set you up to be to be set up for the next Benghazi because you're going to reaffirm the greatness of the military industrial complex and how great the US is. Yeah, not saying that the US isn't great, but but it's it's the belief that it's against all costs. You know, we we have to go and we have to do certain things because the military industrial complex says we do that we get involved in a situation like that. We and, have scenarios like that. And if this side wins, the right side, the Republican side, then everything will be set right. So if you enjoyed this review, our first movie review, please go to youtube.com slash pyrolytical and subscribe. And tune in next week as we review Star Trek Beyond. <laughs>